We're closing out 2018 with a catch up of where we've been lately. Welcome to Vacation Mavens, a family travel podcast with ideas for your next vacation and tips to get you out the door. Here are your hosts, Kim from Stuffed Suitcase and Tamara from We Three Travel. Today's presenting sponsor is Rosetta Stone. Are you planning an international trip next year? Now is the time to start learning a new language with Rosetta Stone. The Rosetta Stone language learning system prepares you to use your new language skills in the real world. Rosetta Stone uses visual cues in its dynamic immersion system to develop practical conversational skills. With an emphasis on speaking, you will feel confident using your new language skills when traveling abroad. This holiday season, why not gift your family or yourself a 3, 6, 12, or even 24-month subscription for as little as under $11 per month? You can learn on the go with the Rosetta Stone mobile app with features like downloadable lessons for learning offline and an audio companion for environments where you can listen but not speak aloud. Visit rosettastone.com to sign up today. Hey, Tamara. So we are back together again. Thankfully, you are healthy once again, and our schedule is all lined up between all of our travels and miscues, but we are ready to close out our year with our final episode. So do you want to start us off and talk about where you have been lately? Yeah, you know, I had to actually write it down (laughs) because there have been so many places recently. Well, I had to ask you. (laughs) Yeah, we haven't talked in so long, which I apologize for, but you guys would not have wanted to hear me for about three weeks. I was pretty sick and then traveling in between. So, um, yeah, so I think if we go back in time to November, the first place that I was since we last chatted was Chicago. And I was there for the holidays, kind of like a to see what Chicago does for the holidays. And I, probably also part of the reason why uh, I was sick for three weeks <laughs> because I spent a lot of time out in the cold. So I'm going to blame Chicago a little bit, but I actually loved it. We I had a really good trip. I was there. It was a press trip with um, City Pass, which they coordinated with Choose Chicago, which is the local, you know, like tourism office. And I was there for like four days. And Hannah and I were in Chicago for a day in the summer, but definitely very different in the winter, not just because of the cold, but because it wasn't as crowded. Uh, But we kind of got to do like a lot of classic Chicago things, but then also all the holiday stuff, too. It looked like the holidays you had some fun, you know, like lots of lights and experiences, but anything that stood out that really made you what made Chicago in the winter worthwhile? Well, I I put together a post about it, so we'll link to that in the show notes, but they had a really nice parade, um, which was kind of kicking off the holiday season, the like Festival of Lights down the Magnificent Mile, Uh, but that was part of me sitting in the cold for four hours, (laughs) but you know, that was fun. We went to a tree lighting, which was also outside in the cold for an hour. Um, and they do fireworks after both of those, which is really cool. And actually, the MC at the tree lighting was the guy that plays Hamilton in the Chicago uh, version. Oh. And so that was kind of neat. But they, you know, I, th- I thought it was surprising how early they kicked it off because this was like mid-November. It was before Thanksgiving. So it's like you have a really long season, you know, to go to Chicago and do some of these things, you know, and there's you know, the ice skating in a couple of different places. One of the museums, the Museum of Science and Industry. Uh, has all these different trees that they decorate from different countries, um, you know, to represent different countries at least. And, you know, there's just a a ton of different things. Like I I just always think of New York, you know, when it comes to Christmas and people going to a city specifically for Christmas um, or for the holidays. But, you know, I, I kind of realize that all the cities have stuff and some may not be as famous, but actually Chicago seems to really get into it. So it was good. I will say the one thing that I didn't like as much with Chicago was their Chris Kindle market. It's very authentic. Um, so it's all the vendors are German and they have the mulled wine and, you know, it's really pretty. But, oh, my goodness, it's so crowded because it's in this like small little square. I think it's even more crowded than like Bryant Park or Union Square in New York. Wow. And 
it's like you, there were lines out the door to like go into the little store selling the nutcrackers and there were lines, you know, for all the foods and you couldn't even get close to the booths to see like the different handicrafts. And I was like, I'm out of here. Like, I just want my souvenir mug and my hot chocolate and I'm, <laughs> I'm getting out of here because the crowds are kind of freaking me out. But the rest of Chicago, it didn't feel that crowded. It definitely doesn't feel like New York does around the holidays, which I think you just got a taste of, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was insane. Like I, I thought, you know, I'd seen people who'd gone and they normally go around the like week after Thanksgiving and uh, Mm -hmm. we were there on a weekday. So I was there a Monday through a Wednesday and yeah, it was, it was crazy. It was like December 3rd to 5th and it was still like packed people and a Rockefeller center was just like so crowded. (laughs) When I used to live in New York, I remember my brother coming in once when my nephew was young and he wanted to go see the tree. So I'm like, okay, like we kind of try to avoid Fifth Avenue, you know, in December, but we walked down there and I felt I had lifted up my nephew because I felt like he was just going to get crushed, you know, because there's, it, it was almost like the, there's so many people, your feet are off the ground, you're just moving along, you know, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. we've taken Hannah like, like after Christmas or right before Christmas as we're driving down to or from New Jersey and she hates like going anywhere near the tree. Like she, I have a picture of her with like a face, like she does not look holiday happy. You know, she was just like, get me out of here <laughs> now. It's just like so many people. So yeah. yeah. So Chris, uh, overall uh, Chicago, I didn't think was, was nearly as bad as that. And you know, overall it was a great stay. I mean, we visited a lot of the city pass attractions like the sky deck Chicago, which is at the top of the Willis tower, which used to be the Sears tower. And they have this thing called the ledge, which you may have seen on my Instagram where you can, yeah. it's like a glass box that you step out into. So that, you know, is, is pretty cool. It, it kind of, I had to like hold on to the side of the wall a little bit as I was stepping out and it was cloudy. I'm like, if it was clear and I could see all the way down, I, I might have had to crawl out there. I don't know. <laughs> I but know. It like, fun. It's funny. I don't think of myself as really like scared of heights necessarily, but there is, I think innately in everyone like that's insane. <laughs> like step out yeah. in a glass box off, the, you know, like, I don't know, 50 stories, 60, 70 stories. 103. Know. Holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Like that's casual. I wasn't even comfortable. And- I, I went up to a friend's room in New York and she was on the 51st floor and even beyond the elevator. I was like, this just feels wrong. <laughs> like, I don't think <laughs> this is normal. <laughs> well, I, I don't mind like if there's a nice barrier, you know, like if yeah. there's a, a fence of, uh, you know, like whatever, like I'm okay. Yeah. Um, but I do not like glass floors. Like it could no. be one story and I don't like glass floors. I don't know why they just kind of freak me out. And then we're meeting with the person, um, the general manager of the building. And he's like, yeah, that's like an inch and a half of tempered glass. I'm like, what? <laughs> an inch and a half of glass. Like, yeah. yeah it's but like, that's not enough. Like, I want I to did be it. two floors full. <laughs> It was funny, all the, all the comments that I got on the Instagram, you know, people are like, no way. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was good. And we saved that the Four good. Seasons, which was really, um, which is really nice. Yeah, um, that, that seems like a tough, a tough assignment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was so hard to look yeah. out at the lake and, oh, you know, man. be pampered. <laughs> yeah, I would wrap up in my robe when I got cold. Yeah. <laughs> nice. It was good. But yeah, I had fun. I like Chicago. Now that I've had some time to explore and not just be there for business, um, I really like it a lot. It, f- it feels like so much more open than New York, like a little cleaner and not as crowded. So I, I like those things. I mean, I am always love New York. You know, it's always going to be kind of home in a way, but I'm starting to realize I'm starting to drop some of my New York bias, I guess is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> How magnum, magnanimous, so magnum, yeah, whatever, right. magnum, whatever that word is. <laughs> so um, while I was in Chicago, you were in Memphis. Yes. We had a lot of overlapping travel. We did, yeah, which made, you know, recording tricky. I did. I went to Memphis, which was uh, my first time. I think it was my first time ever in Tennessee, actually. Well, I take that back because I, as a kid, evidently, I went to Memphis with my mother. I don't really remember it that well, but she was she's a big Elvis fan. So um, supposedly at some point somewhere um, there was like a Graceland trip or something. Now I'm not even remembering. Yeah. Anyways. But I went to Memphis because I was chatting with a guy that works for Memphis Tourism when we were down in Barbados, and I was gushing about how I'm completely head over heels addicted to Hallmark movies, which is really, you know, (laughs) insane. Uh, And I was just saying that it's like my favorite thing. I typically would work with them on in the background because 
they're kind of always the same storyline. You can kind of just listen to him and know that everything's going to be happy in the end, right? So I was gushing about this, and he said, well, you know, there was a Hallmark movie called Christmas at Graceland that was filmed in Memphis, and it's we're having a, a world premiere for it at Memphis, and you should come down for it. And so they invited me down, and... I got to go to the Christmas lighting at Graceland, which is interesting because Graceland has turned in like it's more than just the house. The house is still kind of on one side of this road with gates and, you know, barriers and stuff. And on the other side of the road, right across the street is where they have all of the, you know, like the admission booth and the, you know, and they've got sound stages and like the airplanes and gift shops and all that stuff. And so over there on that side, we actually, they did a big Christmas lighting where they had Scotty McCreary. So if you're an American Idol fan, you'll know him. And oh, yeah, he, I remember that name. Yeah, yeah. And so he sang and then they lit the lights across the street. And so you could sort of see it and it's this big thing. But then the big thing was we went and saw this premiere of Christmas at Graceland. Which another American that had Kelly Pickler. Um, oh, I remember her too. Yeah, she was in the movie. And so we went and watched the movie and, you know, it was just so cute. And it was really, you know, I just loved it. It was a neat experience to be a part of. And then I got to explore Memphis. So I they put me up at the Peabody, which yeah, I know we you've stayed been there. there. And I loved it. It was really nice. They've just renovated. I had one of the newly renovated rooms. Had they renovated when you were there? I don't know. A room was really pretty. I love yeah. the colors. I love the size of it. It was it was definitely really, really pretty. I just remember that it was also loud, like into the hallway. Oh, weird. Um, okay. I was up a little higher. I think I was on the 10th floor and I didn't have any noise at all. But they, I guess they started lower and worked their way up. So I had one of the newly, newly renovated rooms. Um, but it was gorgeous. I thought it was really clean and nice and I just loved it. So it was a lot of fun. We were, so I got to see the duck walk and I just, I loved it. And then we also went to tea there. Did you have tea at the Chez Philippe or? Um, no. Yeah. So we were I, too busy eating barbecue and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. We went to barbecue too. Where did you go for barbecue? Because I guess well, it's a contentious com- commentary there. Yeah, I mean, we went to a few different places. The one place that I really loved, it's kind of like a little off the beaten path, but it's called Alcinia's Soul Food. Oh, nice. And so that that place actually wasn't barbecue, but it was soul food. And it was like the owner, Alcinia, she will hug everyone that comes in. It's just like that. It's like a very local kind of place. And we loved it. So that was kind of my favorite. Nice. Well, we went to Rendezvous. And part of the reason we also went there was because because there's another one called Central Barbecue, which is really well known. I did go there. Yeah, I I really did like Central Barbecue. Yeah. And it was great. Um, And she took me to Rendezvous. And part of that was because I ended up doing a story about all the Memphis places in the movie. So if you're a big Hallmark movie fan now, you can go if you go to Memphis, you can see kind of all the areas that were either mentioned or filmed in the movie. And it was pretty cool. And so we did Rendezvous. But the big thing that stood out to me, which I know I think you have a post on, um, and I haven't figured out how I want to write about it, but uh, the National Civil Rights Museum was absolutely unbelievable and very emotional. And I feel like, you know, I even I think I mentioned it to you or uh, maybe my friend Eric, but you should... Like, I feel like in a way, every kid in America needs to go there more than just the I White agree. House. I um, agree. Like it, it was extremely, extremely moving. And it so there was things I was sending and I'm like, oh, my goodness, like not to get into politics, but just to see things that are going on in the world today. And the fact that these things mm-hmm. are still happening and to see like, OK, this was happening in the 50s. And, you know, here we are this many years later and we're still like there's still people trying to do this and it, it's well, just very, yeah. I think one of the things that struck me about that museum too, and that was the first one that we did on our civil rights um, trip. Okay. And so, you know, it definitely had a huge impact. Yeah. Um, but in the beginning, it really talks about, you know, how far slavery goes slavery, back. You know, yes. you're talking about centuries, centuries of this, you know, mindset of, of people, you know, being, portrayed as less Commodity, and yeah. and property and you know like and just so, I mean it's, it's so deep rooted it makes you realize like how you know kind of why it's so hard to, to dig this out but it, it was really powerful I, I loved it I'm, yes. and I'm so glad to hear you say that because like it was something that like I was passionate about but I was not sure like will everyone else have the same kind of experience there yeah. or not so like when you when we were 
like texting each other and you, you had said that it was emotional for you too. Cause yeah. I, mean, I was definitely in tears after, yes. um, after it. So yeah, I, I, I agree. I, it's an, yeah. if, and if not that one, at least some like good civil rights museum. Um, but that definitely is, is one of the best that one in Atlanta or, and each of them has something that's just so powerful and yeah. definitely rings, you know, rings a bell with like, Oh, like I yeah. hear this kind of rhetoric. Yes. Now, you know, yep. that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the fact like what they've chosen to show in there and yeah, it's, it's so emotive. And for you guys who don't know the thing, I think also that just really at the end kind of, hit me over the edge was Mm -hmm. um, the location of this, the National Civil Rights Museum in Memphis is at the hotel where Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. And it's where he lost his life. And you, you're standing at the the rooms that he was in and um, just knowing that, and everything that you go through and you just see the struggles that, you know, the men and women of color in our nation have gone through just seeing like they just show all these stages that these people went through, like houses being bombed, buses being bombed. I mean, like just spit and it's just absolutely horrid. And um, yeah. So anyways, sorry, long time on that, but it's worth it. And I I really believe that people, if you guys have a, an opportunity to get to Memphis, it's more than Graceland. Like, please do not think that's what Memphis is the only thing to offer. I mean, I think Graceland's awesome in a lot of ways and has some really neat, great things. But the I it wasn't even on my, like, I knew you had gone, but it wasn't really, like, when I thought of Memphis, I thought Graceland. And that's kind of what I think people think of. And you don't realize there's this absolutely amazing museum that I feel like everybody in our nation should go visit because it's really you know, it just, I think it makes you just a better citizen of our nation to know what, you know, our nation has been through with struggles with humanity and stuff. So. Yeah, I agree. Everyone does think Graceland. And when we went, we were there for three days and we didn't even go to Graceland. <laughs> yeah. Hannah was like, I don't really like Elvis. I'm like, oh, I don't really like Elvis either. I'd rather do these other things. And yeah. so, um, yeah, it's, and, and there are other, you know, there's a whole history of, of music of, oh, yeah. um, you know, of blues so and, and yes. yeah, so there's all, there's so many other things to do there, yeah. but that, that sounds like just absolutely the perfect trip for you. Like they found the perfect person to go yeah. in terms of your love of like the Hallmark movies. I know, it's so crazy. And then I did get to go into Graceland on my own. Um, I went for a little tour and I mean, that is just what they have done with the marketing. And like, I would say if you're a business minded person, just to see what they've turned that into and the, um, mm. the branding that they have done. So we, you go in and you get a personal iPad that you wear with headphones and it takes you like, literally you like are on these tour groups, but you're like on your own and you come Mm -hmm. to the room and it's like John Stamos talking you through and he explains all about this room and then it beeps and you, it says, okay, now proceed down the hallway to the da 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 da. And then you push the button and it, you stand in front of the picture of the room and he narrates about the room and then you go. And so I think the way they have done that, it made me way more appreciative of what it was as opposed to if it would have just been plaques and walking through a house, Um, Mm -hmm. like the history and kind of the cool, you know, information that you got from it was really cool. And I'm, you know, my mom's a huge Elvis fan. I, you know, I know some of the songs and stuff. So even as a non like Elvis junkie, I could appreciate the way it was done and the, the way they walk you through. I think that's cool. So, so that was my Memphis, you know, kind of the highlights of it. And yeah, I will link to my post also, because if you're a Hallmark fan and you've watched that Kelly Pickler, Wes Brown, Christmas at Graceland, Wes Brown was there for the, 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 screening and then we were at we got to go to a little like hors d'oeuvres party afterwards and he was there and I kept like oh should I go get this picture but I'm not I'm not like that so I never did right (laughs) I just couldn't bring myself to go be a celebrity selfie person but anyway I'm I couldn't either I'm it feels I'm way too shy and and not even just that but I feel like especially if they're just out somewhere I never want to intrude you know like when I've seen people in in public it's just like just fun just to have seen them you know well he was definitely there for like I mean it, it would have been normal for, for the him because he yeah. was there for the premiere but um, yeah so I didn't feel so bad that way but it just felt weird to me because it's like I'm not I mean 
yeah, I've seen him before, but it's not like I'm a huge fan or right. So it just felt like disingenuous, like I was only doing it right. to be able to say, "Hey, I'm at this premiere with Wes." Rand. So um, one time, one yeah. time, Glenn and I were away, and we were at this um, hotel that was hosting a celebrity golf uh, golf tournament, and so I checked in next to Charles Barkley, who I <laughs> at the time like I, I did have like a major crush on Charles Barkley when I was younger. So I was like, ah, la la, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, sure, go say hi, but I didn't. But then later in the bar there were these women that were just falling all over they were all like sports stars so like I wouldn't recognize them like I may know their name but I wouldn't actually recognize most of them and they were like can I have your autograph can I take your picture who are you again oh no and I was like oh my god (laughs) how do people deal with that I I would just slap them yes (laughs) yeah that's a little yeah <laughs> so anyway, cool. And so that was kind of your so your time in Memphis. Memphis. Yeah, exactly. And um, I think it was good. I was very pleased. It was good, and I I liked the you know. There's this main street. I'm sure. I don't know if you went there, but it it was kind of. They've got some beautiful murals and some. It's kind of got a little bit of a small towny feel, and I don't know. I was I liked Memphis. I thought it was great. So. Yeah, highly recommend that. And then where did you go next? So we've done Chicago, and then I was in Memphis, and then you went to yeah. Philly, Philadelphia? I went to, yeah, I was going to say, I went to right? Florida for Thanksgiving, but that was yeah. just with family. And so my next trip, especially since I spent Thanksgiving in bed, <laughs> there was nothing <laughs> exciting to report there. Yeah, I remember uh, that's when uh, you got really sick, because that's when we were chatting, yeah. Yeah, it's like I was kind of sick in Chicago and then it came on really strong in thanks in over Thanksgiving and then I tried to recover some to go to Philadelphia. So then I went also on another press trip, it kind of came up that they wanted people that had a connect to Philly to come back and kind of just see what they do for the holidays. So again, a holiday theme. And a few years ago, I think it was actually like four years ago, Glenn and Hannah and I went to Philadelphia like after Christmas because my my family lives about an hour kind of north in central New Jersey. And so to go to Philadelphia is very easy for me. I went to graduate school in Philadelphia. So I do have those connections. Um, and when we went, I was really surprised by how nice it was to be in Philadelphia for Christmas time nice. again versus New York, because that's what we would usually do. And it would be, you know, mobbed with people and Philadelphia has a really nice um, Christmas market. And going back this time, I got to see really comparing it to Chicago and there was tons of room to walk around. There were no lines at things <laughs> like it was just so nice. It wasn't, there weren't as many like authentic German vendors of handicrafts, but there was still like plenty to see and, you know, lots of good food and mulled wine, although I did not like their mulled wine, but it was, you know, it it was really nice. So we did that. We did a, um, so that's basically in what they call love square because it has one of those love sculptures, you know, that you recognize with the L-O-V-E. Yeah, Yeah. I know exactly. Yeah. Isn't Chicago... Where's the famous, yeah, Chicago. Indiana, I think. Oh, is Indiana, the, okay, well, the famous one. Yeah. And then I thought it was originally in Philadelphia because Philadelphia is like the city of brotherly love, but apparently it's in Indiana. And then maybe Philly was one of the first other ones, but now they're kind of all over the place. But we, yeah, we went to this other place called Franklin Square and they do a light show like every evening, like every half hour where it's like 75,000 lights set to music. So you'll have like a song going and the music and the lights are like flashing. It, it's pretty. I mean, they just like have a carousel there and mini golf and a little um, some fire pits set up. So just kind of you can go for a little bit and see the lights and, you know, have a drink or have a hot chocolate and sit by the fire pit. Just kind of a fun outdoor thing to do. And they have uh, down at on the Delaware River, they have something called Winterfest at River Rink. So there's a like a full size ice skating rink there. And they have next to that also like some fire pits and, you know, food and and things like that. So lots of things to do outside. I also went into the Macy's there, which has a famous light show like inside. They have basically a big atrium. And so they have a big tree and a light show that goes on there. And then up on the third floor, they have this Dickens village, which it's funny (laughs) because I went I went for the light show. And I got there like right at the end. And then there were all these people and they're like, go to the third floor, go to the third floor. So I'm like, okay, I'm getting in line. I have no idea what I'm going for. And I'm by myself and I'm like, 
what? And so I was basically like looping in and out of like the velvet rope kind of thing. And I'm like, what am I in line for? <laughs> and how stupid will I feel if I turn and ask the people behind me? You know? because that would have been hilarious. Like, Why are you in line if you don't even know what you're in line for? And I'm like, it's something Christmas related. I want to write about Christmas in Philadelphia. So I should. <laughs> and then as I'm I've, after maybe like 15 minutes of like this line, I'm like, what if I'm in line for Santa? <laughs> That was so it was really funny. But basically it was it's they call it Dickens Village and it's the scenes from a Christmas carol and it's probably been around like a tradition for a while cuz it's like wax figurines and like it looks like a little street in London and you kind of wind through I would say it's not quite full size, but it's you know, fairly large dioramas. So it's not like little tiny things that you're seeing. Because at first I'm like, well, is this going to be one of those Christmas villages that like people buy? You know, like those little things you put under the, the tree or something. And so it kind of just like told the story of the Christmas Carol. But if you didn't know the story, I think if you were little kids, you'd be like, what am I looking at? And oh. like these wax figures are creepy. You know? <laughs> um, but it, it was neat, you know, if you do know the story. And at the end, you can meet with Santa Claus. But I, I skipped that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bummer. It's, I know. I wanted that picture. Yes. (laughs) So it's funny. But then the big, one of the big things that um, we did for the holidays was we went out to Longwood Gardens, which is a little bit south of Philadelphia. And I've been there before. I've taken my mom for Christmas, but they do an amazing, amazing, amazing job because it's this botanical garden. So they have indoor conservatories, which are filled with you know special displays and and tree lighting and organ playing and Christmas caroling and um, they had an exhibit which was floating trees which kind of reminded me of like Christmas at Hogwarts with all these trees like kind of hanging from the ceiling as if they were like those big floating candles yeah, yeah. that you see. I remember you posted that yeah yeah, so it was really and then outside they have half a million lights on acres and acres of ground and so there's like kind of like dancing fountains and there's tree houses and there's hot chocolate. It's just, you can spend hours there. And the last time I went with my mom and Hannah and Glenn, we were so cold. So we like, we couldn't spend that much time outside and it was much more crowded, but going earlier in the season, it was a little bit like misty rainy, but it wasn't cold and it was not nearly as crowded. So, so that was, that was really nice. So I I also have updated my post about all the things to do so there's just so much to do in Philadelphia at Christmas. So I wrote a post about it and we'll we'll put a link to that in our show notes. Very cool. What else, so you've been there a lot. Is there anything else that, you know, year round that people should definitely make sure they visit? Well, I love Philadelphia because of the history. And I feel like it's another one of those cities that it would be nice if everyone in the country could visit because mm-hmm. I think people think about going to Boston for history, which obviously there is a lot there. But Philadelphia is you have Independence Hall. It's where the Declaration of Independence was signed and the Constitution was signed. And they do an amazing job um, with some of the museums. And the last time that I was there, I really loved the Constitution Center, which kind of really tells how difficult it was to come up with a constitution for the U.S. Um, And we've been to Independence Hall and learned about, you know, the signing and we've seen the Liberty Bell. Um, They also have a really good Jewish American History Museum. But this time I went to a brand new museum. Well, not brand new. It's like a year old, but it was new to me. um, Called the Museum of the American Revolution. And it was fantastic. It was you know, it's like the newer museums are just so well done. Yeah. You yeah. know, just the way that they're designed and their interactivity. And it was just all these different galleries, which told the timeline of the American Revolution. But it also brought in people or groups of people that you didn't know had a role before, oh, okay. you know. So it really went in in depth. And there were a couple of movies and it was very, it was just very interactive. Like, I feel like it's something that... Uh, like all ages, you know, would enjoy. Mm, uh, it's not a boring museum. It's, and it's right there in like the Independence Hall area with like, you know, the historic old city. Um, so I really love that. I, so I feel like I, I added it to my list of things to do of like historical attractions in Philadelphia. I feel like you should, you know, create like a playlist also like with Hamilton that just <laughs> walks you through all these historical East Coast cities, right? Well, it's funny because when when I was there, I think until March, there's a special exhibit about Hamilton <laughs> and it talked, you know, about his life and there were things that he did 
that even from the play and things like that, like I didn't realize mm-hmm. that are actually very close to where I grew up because I grew up outside of Trenton and and Princeton and like he played a role crossing the Delaware and you know, in Princeton. So I was like, Oh, I've been to that field. I've been there, you know? So yeah. So there, there was more, um, that I learned about Hamilton too. That's cool. Very nice. I, I like that you got so many Christmas cities added to your repertoire. So that's great. I think it's so funny. Cause if you look at my web, on my website right now, it's like, uh, Christmas in London. Cause I just wrote up all <laughs> some of the things last year in London and then it's like Christmas in Chicago, Christmas in Philadelphia. And I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm getting it out there with all these Christmas posts, but it's helpful, right? Like to understand what the special things are to do. Exactly. Yeah. And being able to know like what to look for and stuff because yeah, it's tricky. You don't always, you know, you don't always know. Yeah. So when I was in Chicago, I mean, when I was in Philadelphia, where were you? Um, oh, you went on the cruise. Oh, yeah. Was it the Celebrity Edge when you were there? Yeah. I, I don't know where they overlapped Around at. that time, at least. Yeah, exactly. Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So I was invited to a uh, press cruise, so a media cruise before it started its, you know, real service. To so this is another check- brand new ship. Right? Yeah, another brand new ship by Celebrity Cruises called The Edge. And I was on it for two nights out of Fort Lauderdale and we literally went they went down to the Bahamas but we didn't even port or anything they just basically went down there and let people out on the they were all gushing over these lifeboats I don't know I don't know enough about lifeboats but evidently the ones on the edge are really cool and so they let people go out so you could get some pictures and a look at the ship from outside Um, but we were kind of docked or like anchored offshore but you could sort of see like Atlantis and all that. But we were just there for a short time. And then we turned around and came right back to Fort Lauderdale. And so basically, it was just to give us a feel for the ship. And uh, it was really great. It's it was nice. It, you know, Celebrity, they this is their brand new ship. And it has a maximum capacity of like 2900, I think is what they have. Oh, it might be a slight, Smaller. you know, you know how yeah. we talked about how they listed as 2900 passengers, but it's but based on some kind of like double occupancy or something else that you can actually have a little over that. Remember we were talking about that. I don't, oh, I don't remember. We talked about that. I think with the bliss, but to give you guys an idea, I recall if I, if I'm recalling correctly, the bliss was 4,900, wasn't it? It was definitely a 4,000 something. Yeah. It might've been 45 or 4,900. So to give you an idea, this is the brand new celebrity cruises ship. So it's only 2,900. So it's a smaller, definitely a smaller ship. And I would say that, It definitely, the thing about Celebrity Cruises is I would normally, before going on two of them, now I've I've gone on one with Mia that we were on for a week, and then I've also gone with now Lizzie on this one for two nights. And so originally I would think most people would say Celebrity Cruises are definitely for adults. And I would say in some ways that's true. They're not going to have like the Bliss had, you know, a race car track and laser tag, you know, that sort of stuff. They're not, they don't have that. But They do have, if you have kids or a family and you're into, you know, like finding relaxing places to hang out and read a book or, you know, go listen to live music or, you know, play Jenga on the rooftop or enjoy some really good food at just a nice restaurant. Or if your kids are into kids clubs, then I would say that celebrity they're great because they don't have a lot of kids. And so they they focus on creating a lot of nice seating areas where people can lounge and just relax. And they also have, I think, delicious food. And then their kids clubs, because they're not overwhelming, you know, with kids, I feel like the kids get a lot more one on one attention and really more more organized activities because they only have a few kids to to focus on as opposed to, you know, a ship full of kids. So I definitely um, think that celebrity cruises, why most people wouldn't necessarily think they're for families. I think they do have a special place for certain kind of families. And um, yeah, the edge was amazing. They have this, uh, I, I wrote a post about the five best things to do. They just have some amazing like spaces. One of the spaces they have is this roof rooftop garden where uh, it's just so much seating and lounge areas. And uh, there's a big, monitor that plays kind of pretty nature 
flower blooming scenes, but at night they do movies under the stars. So you can watch a movie back there. And then they also have this edge area, or I mean, sorry, it's called Eden, which is basically just a three story wall of windows. It's kind of like that observation deck on the bliss, but this mm-hmm. one is more, yeah. um, more like the Haven. It's more of a lounge that has a three wall window as opposed to like a wrap around space, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah. And so it seemed like there was, you know, some good seating. And then they do have like a wrap around ramp where there was kind of hidden nook seating. It was just kind of cute. So we liked that. And so they've just got, I think that the edge, the big thing for it is just, it's not a huge ship. So you're not like on a mega ship, but it's all, you know, new. They have this new design called an infinite veranda. And I was thinking of this when you and I were talking about, you know, balconies on an Alaskan cruise, because basically they've created the balcony enclosed in your room. So it just feels like you have an extra like three feet, four feet, whatever of room depth with um, a wet tile, though. It's kind of interesting. So your carpet ends and then you've got like patio furniture, like two chairs and a table. So it feels like a balcony, but you've got solid walls beside you and above you and all you have is like a a split wall window basically that has almost like a car window you can push a button and the lower the upper half of the window drops down if that makes sense so you kind of create so it's just like a window it's like a motorized window so your balcony now is just kind of all enclosed so I think that you know it's kind of a cool a cool layout that's you know, you're not you're not smelling or listening to the people next to you, <laughs> if that makes sense. You don't have to, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just a different feel. So that's the one thing they have, and yeah, it was cool. I, I think it's a beautiful ship, and would definitely appeal to people who don't want one of the mega ships but want to be on a newer ship, and definitely who are looking for more of the laid back, you know, kind of environment with good food. And the thing about Celebrity that's awesome is they, you know, they have very attentive customers or like their staff that are on board, but they're not in your face. You know, they're not there trying to like, come play this game or can I help you with, you know, they're not effusive, I guess. So they're kind of like the silent people who they're alert. And if you make eye contact, they're ready to help you, but they're not like at your table 24 seven bugging you, if that makes sense. Mm Mm-hmm. So it's just well, a luxury, a more luxury feel, I think. Yeah. All the pictures looked very unique, like not cruise shippy, yep. you know? So I, I liked that. I, I There were a couple where you really couldn't tell that you were on a cruise ship, but it was, you know, open air, but it didn't have that look at all. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's very, it's a very unique kind of cool thing. And like the hot tubs are on these pedestal like wine glasses martini glasses it's kind of cool <laughs> and the jogging cat the jogging track like floats over the pool deck at one point and kind of comes around and it's it's a very unique design it just feels upscale I guess you know but it's small I mean it definitely feels smaller than a mega ship but it's nice and lots of great food options and uh, so did Lizzie like it yeah she had a blast she you know she enjoyed it in that she loved the food and the teen club, there weren't any kids really on board. So she ended up playing. I was actually there with another blogger and uh, they had their child. And so she and this other little girl, they were kind of hanging out. I mean, it wasn't a long, long trip. I know that she would have normally enjoyed, you know, like the teen club if there would have been a lot of teens on board. So not a lot, but a few. And so that would have been something, but she, she liked it in that, it, she just wants to lounge and be on her phone kind of at that age. And so it was <laughs> yeah. a perfect kind of perfect space for that. Just not really, you know, a lot, you know, of requests, but she did, we played like giant Jenga up on the rooftop they had in bottle toss and she had a lot of fun with that. So that was fun. Somebody asked me recently, like, you know, what Hannah was doing, like, I've been away a lot and, you know, giving me that whole guilt trip. And I was like, I honestly think at this stage, like all she's doing on the weekend is her homework and being on her phone. Yeah. So as long as she has somebody to drive her somewhere or whatever, like make her meals, yeah. she's good. Like she it's she's a teen, you know, she's it's, full on teen. So exactly. Yeah, they they're their own people. I mean, it's good for, you don't have to entertain them 24 seven and just let them kind of, yeah, my, my girls are fine. It seems funny. I've been traveling a lot and, um, they miss me and stuff, but then it's like, well, what have you been up to or what, what's going on? And they're like, no, then (laughs) it's like just school and friends. So yeah. I call, how was your day? Good. Yeah. What did you do? How much? Got homework. Yep. Working on it. Yep. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) 
talk to you tomorrow. I like, know, exactly. It's like, no. <laughs> I know. Anything exciting happen at school? Anything going on with your friends? Anything, you know, no. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yep, totally. Anyways, but yeah, so she had a great time and it was nice to get away with her. She, um, you know, she's been hesitant to miss school, but she finally was like, I want to go. I mean, she just loves cruises. She, the food, I mean, she just loved it. She loved, you know, getting to sit down and eat and choose what she wanted from the menu. We had, oh, that's the one thing I wanted to say. Oh, sorry. I almost forgot. We had one of the coolest experiences. I put this in my post as the first thing. And it was called Le Petit Chef. And it was a dinner experience. And it's an added fee of, I believe it's $55 per person, I think, um, if you want to have it. But you you sit at these tables. And I will say that the lighting is a little tricky if you're sensitive to, like, strobe light. Because there's a, like, projector. So just know that initially. Like, it really bothered Lizzie but then we were at an edge table and she faced out and it wasn't quite as bad and once the show started she was fine but you're you are sitting on these white tables and they have a very you know like specific setup like they have a spot like your drink goes here your plate is here and you don't touch it and during the um it's a show that's played on your table and they have a competition between these four chefs and the four chefs actually make the food that comes out to you so you're served on a set menu you can ask for the alternates if you want but it won't match the show and so um they have like a a play a a movie that plays out on your table and this chef prepares like your salad and then the next chef prepares the appetizer and then they you know it's like this visual cue and then out comes the server and they set the dish in front of you and it's what the person just prepared it's really cool so yeah I saw some little pictures of that and I was so confused I'm like what is this so yeah Yeah, and I realized I made a video and I put it on my post but I realized that I'd never like showed that the food matched like when they came and sat the food and I thought I should have filmed that so I could have like overlaid it and I didn't um but yeah it's really it's a very cool concept and it was a lot of fun and uh you could see that because it was myself and Lizzie and then Eric and his daughter Sadie and both of the girls were just like mesmerized like they're just staring and having it was a lot of fun and even the adults there was four adults next to us at the table next to us and they were laughing and having a great time too and so I think that it's really kind of a unique experience Cool. Well, I'm glad it was worth you guys flying across the country for just a couple of days. I know. Yeah, it was it was it got us some good airline miles. <laughs> <laughs> I looked it up. Well, and It was like 5,800 miles. miles earned each leg. So sweet. You know, that was a nice, nice perk. Anyway, so where did you head next then? Where are we going to talk about next? This past weekend, I was down in Georgia um, I've always wanted to see more of the Georgia coast and I've heard about all these islands, Jekyll Island, Sea Island, St. Simon's Island. And I'm like, what are, you know, like, what's the difference between them and what is it like there? And so there was a little meetup of, uh, SATW, which is the Society of American Travel Writers. The East Coast chapter was having a meetup in Portland, Maine, which I've been there many times, and then another one in Jekyll Island. So I flew down and I flew into Jacksonville, Florida. There's a small airline in or small airport rather in Brunswick, Georgia, which is right next door. But it, it's a small airport, so there is not a lot of options to get in there. So I flew down to Jacksonville, Florida, and then I drove up, and it's only about an hour, hour and a half drive from Jacksonville Airport or Savannah, because I flew out of Savannah. And on the way, I stopped at a place called the Okie Finoki Swamp or the Okie Finoki National Wildlife Refuge. So it's the largest. That sounds better than swamp. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what is it? The the <laughs> largest wetlands in North America or the largest intact wetlands in North America and like the third largest wildlife refuge or something like that um, east of the Mississippi. So uh, it was really some place that I'd heard about and I always thought it was in Florida down the Everglades. So I didn't even realize it was in Georgia, but I did uh, a tour, like a, a boat tour, not an airboat, but just a, a more of like a pontoon boat uh, echo tour out into the swamp and we saw some alligators, a whole bunch of little alligators, uh, a lot of water birds. What's the right word? Seabird, not seabirds. I don't know. A lot of birds. Waterfowl? Waterfowl. (laughs) It was funny because, you know, there were some birders on the boat and they're like, oh, that's the so-and-so. And And I'm like, well, number one, I don't have my glasses on. Number two, like, (laughs) it's a big bird. I'll give you that. Like, you know, but I would know like like, blue heron. Yeah. 
like blue heron, like egrets, ibis, you know, uh, some bunch of other things. We saw owls and, and hawk. And what else did I see? I don't know. But it was really pretty. It was it was really neat. It was kind of a cool excursion. And then I drove over to Jekyll Island and stayed at the West in there. So Jekyll Island is kind of part state park. And so a lot of people have gone camping there, but they're kind of upping the game in terms of hotels. Uh, There's a historic hotel called the Jekyll Island Club, but that's actually on like the intercoastal side, not on a beach. And, And then there's the campground and then there were some smaller like days in, holiday in type of things. So I stayed at the West Inn and it's right on the beach. So, you know, beautiful beach And I would say it's like a quieter kind of island in that there's a lot of beach, um, but because so much of it is a state park or preserve, it's not overdeveloped. And so it might be a little bit more limited in terms of like the number of restaurants and shops on the island, but it was really pretty. And you can, there's a bike path, which goes around almost the whole island. And I also stopped at the Georgia Sea Turtle Center so that, you know, there are some activities. I mean, there is a a water park there in the summer, but it's kind of, it's not on the beach side. So it's, it doesn't have like that cheesy feel at all. It's actually has a very, I don't know, it has a nice, quiet, you know, big, wide beaches, pretty flat. So it's, it has a really nice feel to the island. I, I definitely enjoyed it. I went out to this one place called Driftwood Beach and everyone's like, oh, oh yeah. it's amazing. And I thought it was going to be like pieces of driftwood, but it was actually these whole, whole trees. trees. Yeah, I saw that trees on trees that were stories. like uprooted. And so it was pretty, pretty amazing. I think also when I was there, it was pretty chilly and it was really windy. So I don't have the greatest beach pictures, but it all has that like moody kind of Mm -hmm. feel because it's like grayish, you know, like silvery kind of light. So you have that like contrasted with the, um, with the driftwood (laughs) and it really seems like a spookyish kind of place, you know? Yeah. Um, But I did, I drove around all the islands and I went out to all the beaches so I could see what they're all about. And my plan is to write up a post about the different beaches and what, you know, what the different ones are, what the good ones are to go to with families. Cause some of them have stairs. Some of them are a long walk. Some of them have facilities. Bathrooms. Yeah, exactly. That's so helpful. That would be perfect. Yeah. So that's what I'm working on there. So I stayed there for two days. Well, two nights, I should say. It was like one full day, but I was actually not really feeling that well on Saturday. I think, I don't know, I had an oyster shooter. Maybe it wasn't a good oyster. I don't don't know what it was. Um, But there was like an evening event on Saturday that I ended up not going to because they have like a historic area and they do a big thing for the holidays. It's actually when I, I have a post about the places to go on the East Coast for Christmas, and I had put it in there even before I went because I've read about what they do. So they have like a, a trolley where you can go and look at the holiday lights and go around the historic um, district. So I didn't get to do that, but that's okay. I just figured 90 more minutes outside in the cold when I'm not feeling well and uh, and I'm just getting over being sick yeah. is maybe something that's okay to, to skip. So... So that's what, and then the next day I went, I did a little drive through St. Simon's Island, which is much larger. It's more residential, definitely larger homes. There's a bigger village, more restaurants, uh, and a few hotels, like there's the historic King and Prince Hotel and a few other smaller ones. Um, But I just kind of drove through there and actually took a ferry over to Little St. Simon's Island. So Little St. Simon's is a, it's a nature preserve. And there's a small portion of it which is home to the lodge at St. Simon's Island. So it's a privately owned island and you have to take a ferry over. And it's very – it's kind of like an echo lodge meets a dude ranch in that it's it's an all-inclusive resort and it is – it I would I want to say rustic, but at the same time, it was the most comfortable bed I've ever slept in. It, you know, it was beautiful. Like the rooms were beautiful. The lodge was beautiful. The food was delicious. But it is what used to be like a hunting lodge has been made into this resort. And it's really, you know, on a nature preserve. So it's all about enjoying nature. They have, you know, tons of hiking or biking trails, but they have naturalists, like multiple naturalists on site 
that run programs every day. So in a way, it's a little bit like a dude ranch in that in the morning at breakfast, everything is served family style. So you go and you meet the other people that are there and the naturalist will come in and say, okay, this is what we're thinking about doing today. And you fill out a form before you go that says like, I'm interested in kayaking or biking, or I'm more interested in, in birds or plant life, you know, the kind of And then they tailor these activities for you. Yeah. And they'll say, well, this is what we're offering today. Do you want to join us? And so what happened was, first of all, there's only 32 guests ever. That's the max on this Mm -hmm. island. It's 11,000 acres, 32 guests. They have a seven mile beach. And I can't even, it's such a wide, beautiful, flat beach and you think about like, okay, seven mile beach and like Grand Cayman, how yeah. many hotels does that yeah, have exactly. on? You know? yeah. so I was, imagine, like, I was like, thinking that exact same thing. I was like, I've been there. <laughs> right. So imagine seven miles yeah. with no more than 32 people ever. And so they, what happened that when I was there, there was a big group of ladies that were there for like a painting retreat and there was one other couple. And so that other couple had been there for a few days and they're like, we're just going to go off and bike on our own. And so I had a private tour with a naturalist, you know, she took me out in the truck because it had been raining. So like I could walk or or ride out to the beach, but, um, there were a lot of like big puddles and stuff. So, but she took me and therefore we pulled off at different places to look for different wildlife and like bird blinds, like, you know, where you can kind of overlook like a, a a pond or whatever and look at the birds. Um, then we went out on the beach and we collected sand dollars, which I've never actually seen sand dollars in, you know, like on the beach before. Mm -hmm. And, and shells and we just took like a long walk and then we came back and we went through the other part of the island and we saw so much wildlife like first of all you've probably seen these but I had never seen an armadillo before <laughs> like outside of a zoo and I'm just like walking over to the trucks and I see this like armadillo like running across and I'm like what yeah. <laughs> and so we saw You're a bunch of east coast lady I <laughs> am I know like for me it's like the people that come here and take pictures of squirrels I'm like seriously <laughs> Um, but I was, I was thrilled with the armadillo and then we saw a couple little alligators and we saw a lot of birds, like really cool birds, which I don't remember the names of. (laughs) Um, we saw a raccoon just like sitting by the side of the, the road, giving itself a bath. And then finally it was like, Oh, there's people like, let me get out of the road. (laughs) Um, deer. Yeah, it was just, it was really cool. And I just really love it. Like I love going to a place where it's not a big hotel, but there are, you know, there's like individual cabins or where I was, was actually a lodge, which was four rooms with a central living room with a fireplace. I mean, so for a family, it would be incredible, but they also have cabins, which are just like one room cabins that you can do. And there are a couple of rooms in the lodge too. And like, depending on what the setup, they try to put you in things that match. Like they do a lot of like that hands on type of thing that they can do because it's so few people, you know, mm-hmm. like, so that kind of level of uh, attention that you would get for, at like a dude ranch and trying to match you up with people and things. And they, it was just, it was just so nice. It was just a great place to go and like recharge, you know, just kind of, they did have Wi-Fi and stuff, but there's no TVs It just to kind of be with nature. I think the downside though, is that, you know, you're there with nature. So mm-hmm. when I was there in the winter, it was cold. There weren't a lot of mosquitoes, but you know, there can be a lot of mosquitoes. There are, I think they told me like eight or 10 different types of snakes on the Island. And I'm like, thank God I didn't see any of those, you know, <laughs> but you know, it, that, that is what it is. Right. So, but I think for the right kind of like what you said about something else, like the for the right family, for the right people or, or what they're looking for. It's just, it's fantastic. So I loved it. I was really bummed to only stay one day, but it was a place, oh, you know, we first heard about it when Gina, Gina. We went back. We I was going to say Gina, yeah. Yeah, we did the Unplugged uh, Vacations episode. So that's exactly what it's perfect for. Yeah, nice. Sounds like a lot of fun. Sounds yeah. like a cool place. And yeah, I think more and more it's, you know, it's good that there's these, it's good to be able to identify, like if you're this type of family, then that's what it's good for. But yeah. And so when I was there, you were in Nashville, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we just got back to Tennessee twice. It's funny, isn't it? (laughs) It was a little, I know. And it was kind of funny talking to like our food tour guy because he was like, oh, Memphis is so different than Nashville. Nashville is so better. (laughs) It was kind of funny that they had this. They are very different. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, we I did a, a 
you know, was working with SPG Marriott and they said, hey, we want to give you some miles or not miles, I guess, points. And we want to give you some points to book a two night hotel stay somewhere. And so he gave me this big, long list and I, you know, decided to end up we booked this Nashville property. So we just stayed at the Westin Nashville, which uh, I actually like really loved. I fell in love. I, at first, I wasn't um, too sure because one of the things that I fell in love with is they have this gorgeous rooftop bar and rooftop pool that's almost like an infinity pool feel, you know, kind of glass walled and it just looks oh, yeah. gorgeous. Mm-hmm. But of course, we were going in there in the winter and um, it was right when that big snowstorm and cold storm that I think right. you got hit with a little bit on your travels home yesterday uh, ca- came through. And so everybody just kept saying, this is so unusual for Nashville because we had uh, like, you know, really cold temps and just rainy drizzle. I actually felt like it was a little bit colder version of Seattle. <laughs> so Paul, Paul and I were just out this morning and we were like, we feel like we're back in Nashville. But yeah, so unfortunately, we didn't get to enjoy the pool, but the hotel itself was just amazing. It, it We really fell in love with it. So it's a beautiful, beautiful hotel, uh, like 27 floors that is kind of near downtown, like right in the downtown corridor. So we were able to walk to a lot of places. We walked to, there's this famous, um, it's called the Gulch area, and there's mm-hmm. the famous like uh, Wings Lift You uh, yeah, what I have pictures there. Yeah, you know that you know that wing thing. So we were able to walk there, and um, we were able to walk down to Broadway Saturday night. So we experienced oh, crazy. Saturday <laughs> night Broadway, and it did was, you see all of the um like the cycle the like the bike the bikes. bars and things oh, going the, around, or is it too cold for there that? There were some of those. No, they had some more less of the bike bars. More it was um like big uh. You know, like hay bale, uh, like farm trucks. Yeah, like pickup trucks. Yeah, but they're hauling like a big trailer behind them. And all the people were kind of in those trailers with heaters. Yep. That's yeah. what they had. And they were blasting was music. When, when they pulled up next to us, we, Hannah and I were walking. We didn't even go on Broadway at night, but just walking in that general area. Yeah. They would pull up and they'd be like, woo, stoplight, everybody yell. And, and Hannah was like, what? Is that and I never want to do it. I'm like, okay, just remember that. You know? yeah, it's like that's a lot of drunk people having a good time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we went down to Broadway at night and I was, you know, not sure what to expect. And we didn't even really know. I just told uh, Paul, I was like, I need to get some good neon shots and like kind of some shots that showcase this part of Nashville. And it was what, you know, everyone talks about. So I thought I better. I need to make it down there. And I thought Saturday night, it's got to be the perfect way to experience it. And it was actually really awesome. I mean, we went in, it's so funny. We went down there thinking, we'll just walk down there fast and get some stupid pictures and then get back, you know, to the nice hotel where we were comfy. I mean, we loved our hotel. So we got down there and we like just found ourselves going into all these bars. I mean, they have a band in every bar, like live bands, live music. Right. And so you're drawn in the, and there's no cover charges or anything. I mean, people are just going in and out and in and out. And um, so you just hear a song you like and you walk in and check it out. And some of them are like multi levels and they'll have like a different band on a different level or. And it's know, not you, all country, right? No, like it's a no. Mix. Yeah. It's totally a mix. Like we only heard two country songs our whole time there. I mean, some of like there was like ACDC and. And, um, oh, I'm blanking. Pour some sugar on me. Um, Def Leppard. Yeah. I mean, there was just, it was great. It was so much fun. And then, um, so it was, it was a blast. I thought, and the atmosphere felt very, you know, like they had a lot of police things. They had barricades up and stuff. And, um, but it felt, I felt totally fine and safe and, um, people were just having a good time. Like it wasn't scuzz. Like I didn't feel, I mean, there was, definitely maybe a few homeless people, but you didn't feel um, like people were just having a good time. So it was a fun environment to be a part of, if you know what I mean, if that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, that's good. So yeah, I, that's why I thought it would be good for you guys to do as like a couple getaway because yes. when Hannah and I were there, you know, it was it was nice. It was fun. Yeah. Like during the day, we did all the murals and we ate good food and stuff, but we weren't doing that because at, at night kids can't go into that yeah. anyways. No. Yeah. So as a couple's getaway, it, I mean, my goodness, I cannot recommend Nashville enough for like a couple's getaway because one, we absolutely loved the Weston property. We had two lovely breakfasts down there in their hotel restaurant and it, it's kind of open air and it just felt felt really nice and the food was actually good and it was great. So we enjoyed just having a lazy breakfast and then we could wander around the city and then like you know, we did a food tour and so we were able they booked us through using again using this partnership with um SPG and Marriott. You can actually use your Marriott points to book 
they're called Marriott moments. And so you can book travel experiences with points. So mm. it's really, I mean, you can have a whole weekend away. I'm sure they even, you can get airfare and stuff too with um, travel partners, but basically you can fly somewhere and, you know, pay for your hotel with points and then pay for experiences. So we did this food tour and it was a blast. You, I don't, you said it's the same one, um, that you did. I, I, I think it was a couple. Walkie Nashville was the one that I did. Okay. Ours was, um, Memphis bites and sights. I think is the one that ours Memphis? was. No, not Memphis. Sorry. I said the wrong thing. Okay. Um, Oh my goodness. Music bites and sights, um, or music city bites and sights or something like got that. It. Sorry. Okay. That's why I got my M's mixed up. But anyways, uh, but it was really great because we went to, so we started off at a place called the listening room. Did you check that out at all? No. Evidently they have a really awesome brunch there, but the idea behind the listening room is that people, um, songwriters go there. So the idea is kind of country music. These people who, I mean, it made me think of coyote ugly in all honesty, all these music like songwriters who then hope to get recognized or get their songs so that they can then sell their songs to, you know, Taylor, not well, right. Taylor Swift, White Stars, but you know what I mean? Right. Um, these country music stars. So you can go and they have like live music and brunch is their big thing. And they had a hot chicken. So we started there at a hot chicken and the, our driver told us that he liked going there because, you know, they, he likes the, like showcasing that restaurant because it's kind of a unique space. And Mm -hmm. then um, also because their hot chicken is kind of a mild chicken. So people who Mm -hmm. um, don't know hot chicken and also because you don't have to wait in the big Hattie B's line. Right, right. So we went there and had just this delicious, you know, hot chicken with a pickle on a biscuit, handmade biscuit, um, little sandwich. And then they also served a local cider, which I was so excited to see that there's a local brewery doing ciders because mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of that. So we did that. And then we went to a little hole in the wall bar that was over in East Memphis, actually right by that. I dream of Nashville. Oh, I keep saying to Memphis. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. It was over in East Nashville across the river and um, right by the I dream of weenie, which I'll talk about in a second, but it was called like the crowbar and they serve in his mind, the best bushwhacker. So if you heard, did you have a oh, bushwhacker yeah. on yours? No, but I have had those in Alabama. Yeah. Well, and I guess they're known for from they come from the Caribbean and they're like a rum, a frozen rum drink. And so we had one of those and then we went right over across the street to this little VW bus food truck called I Dream of Weenie. And that's where you had said you had been. And uh, she's been on like a bunch of television shows like Food Network shows, not yeah, like Food Network and stuff. Yeah, yeah, not diners, drive-ins and dives, but a few of the other ones. And uh, they had this one. So we got served a hot dog that she put three. It was, you know, cut in thirds and mm-hmm. they had different toppings. So they had a homemade pimento cheese. And then I'm trying to remember like some kind of coleslaw. And then the other one they had was this chow chow, which somebody on Instagram helped me because <laughs> I was like, I can't I don't know what it was like. But it's kind of like a fermented like cat, like kind of like a kimchi type mm-hmm. um, onion. I remember that one, too. Remember, oh. Oh my goodness, that was my favorite. It was so good. So, um, but anyway, so we went there and then we ended out at barbecue at a place called Martin's Barbecue. Where we, Neat. yeah. So it was a lot of fun. It was a great. So great yours experience. was a driving one. Yes, it was a driving, okay. not a walking tour. Yeah. So. Yeah. So definitely different. Yeah. Cause we, we did walkie Nashville and I picked, like you pick a neighborhood. And so yes. I picked East Nashville because I oh, figured cool. I wouldn't usually go there on my own. Yeah. So, and, and it was all based in that area. So, yeah. but we did, we did, I guess the only overlap then is the I Dream of Weenie. Did you do the ice cream across the way from I Dream of Weenie? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh good. And that's by yeah. some, somebody famous, right? Like yeah. a YouTuber? Oh, I don't remember. Um, I'm sure maybe now I'm thinking, oh, cause we did chocolate. I forgot oh, about the you know chocolate what? we went to. It wasn't, it wasn't that ice cream. It was that ice cream, but at a different place, like kind of yes, okay. not just right across the street, but around the corner, there's like an old, like soda pop place, you know, like oh, cool. where like they do like root beer floats shop. and yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it owned by a YouTuber and they have, they have that ice cream okay, there, but cool. they also do like root beer floats and other things nice. like that. Yeah, the it's a Pied Piper ice cream, right? I think it's Pied Piper yes. ice cream. Yeah. And yeah, so we went over there. It's in like a little toy shop. <laughs> it's kind of cute. But it was they cuz uh Paul wasn't he didn't want to drink. And so they instead of getting him the bushwhacker, he said, "Well, we're going to go over here and get you the ice cream and then she can try the bushwhacker." So, uh, cool. we got to get ice cream there as well. So, yeah, that little spot on East Nashville, there was a few things right around there. 
And then we also went, so the one thing we did, I forgot to close out after the barbecue, is we went to a chocolate shop, and now I'm blinking on it. But it was there, kind of by the Gulch, and it was, it's the is TV the show. What? Is it Goo Goo's? No. Okay. Um, the TV show Hee Haw. Like, I oh, didn't, wow. That's I didn't going know back. it. It's like old. <laughs> um, I guess like one of the girls that was on Hee Haw, she opened this chocolate shop. And they had some okay. really unique and yummy, yummy things. So so that was our last spot, stop. But yeah, I liked, you know, the driving tour was great because he, you know, we were curious about the Parthenon because we learned that Nashville's known oh, as yeah. the little, yeah. like little Athens of the South or something. Athens, is that right? Because uh, they had a big, they were the, one of the big revolutionary city, I guess, in a way with education, like building um, like an all women's college. And then um, I believe that they had the first college for people of color. If that's right, I can't remember I now. So. I think it's right, but so they're big on like education and um, the arts and things like that. So, anyway, so they have a full size replica of the Parthenon. Did you go there? I did. I didn't go inside of. Yeah, we but just I did drove see by it, it. On the outside. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the driving tour was nice because it helped us get a good feel for the city and stuff. And it was a private tour that we had booked, so you could do a group tour which we actually overlap with at one, but the private tour was nice because like we wanted to know about the Parthenon. So he drove us over there to just show it to us, um, even though it wasn't part of the tour. So yeah. it kind of gave us a lot of, and you, you get all that history and just cool information about the city, which was nice. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty neat way to use points. I didn't realize that they had those experiences and I'm a Marriott Platinum member so oh, nice so you would have yes. gotten the executive lounge i'm only gold and <laughs> so Ooh. uh we got we still got put on like the 25th floor and our room had like just an unbelievable view and like i said the room i tweeted it but we really i mean it was a great property i highly i highly recommend it like our room was very nice clean organized gorgeous property the lobby is just amazing and really nicely laid out and then the location just can't be beat it's right next to a jw marriott too so if you really want to throw your points around mm. you could book the jw next to it but, well and actually yeah. where i stayed when i was there at union station that was an autograph property so i yeah, could have exactly. I, I had booked that with points as well yeah so. yeah yeah so it's a great and i i really i mean as a weekend getaway it's it was perfect. It was so good. I mean, there was just a nice variety between like the food tour and then just hanging out in your like gorgeous hotel property and then walking around and then doing the Saturday night on Broadway was great. And if you're a country music fan, I mean, we went in and pe we walked by and peeked at the country music hall of fame, mm -hmm. which is in, again, in walking distance, it's right there. So yeah, that's all. It's really great. It's a, I, I mean, I would go back there. It's, I thought it was a cute city. It's like you said, it's perfect for a couple's getaway. Great for it. I'm so glad you had fun. Yeah. I'm glad you had time with your husband I know. alone. It doesn't happen very often. No, I know. It was nice. Yeah, it's it was good. It was weird, you know, in some ways. It's like, and then you get so used to your kids, right? The, then we'd be like, oh, Lizzie would really like this. Or, oh, my right, of course. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Like, you kind of, it's nice to have these experiences with your spouse, but then you kind of see things that you're like, oh, we should bring the girls back or they would love that. But I really fell in love with what you've always said is this the food tour. I, you know, it's not something we booked that often or done that often. And so the fact that this was just another like real, I guess, like gold star, like, yes, for doing those when you are at a city, because it's amazing what you can learn and just the layout it gives you. And yeah, I think it's good. Right. It's not just the food. It's it's the history and you get so much and you get into neighborhoods that you may not have, you know, have gone into if there's not like an attraction there. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And I liked the driving tour. I mean, I know the walking tours are fun because I think that's always a good way to get around and exercise, too. But the driving tour was nice just because you get a feel for the city and learned like we saw they have one of the largest, longest pedestrian bridges there that leads over to the stadium, like the Tennessee mm -hmm. Titan Stadium. Mm -hmm. And we walked we walked over to that bridge from our hotel and got some fun city line shots. What is there that big, uh, it's not the Superman building, is it? Oh yeah. No, the Batman. Batman the AT building. Yeah. yeah. The AT&T building is like a Batman building. It's got these two weird spires that kind of look like bat wings, I guess. Yeah. Yep. It's like, you should see this, the 
bat symbol in the sky above it or something. Yeah, yeah. I didn't actually, that's in my skitty, city skyline shot that I got that I liked. They That's not really in there, that direction. It's kind of funny. Well, we've definitely been talking for a while. Yeah, we, we, we went long. Hopefully people we, are with us. I guess it's a good thing that, you know, we skipped uh, a week and we're actually going to be skipping a couple weeks because we figured everyone's going to be really busy with the holidays and we want to spend a little more time with our families in the holidays too. So we're going to close out the year with this episode and then come back with like a whole schedule next year. So I guess hopefully it's okay. If you didn't listen to it all at once, you can break it up, split it over the weeks, you know? We probably should give them a heads up. I should add an introduction that gives people a heads up that maybe split this episode over two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, but it was good to catch up with everyone. And hopefully everyone liked hearing what we've been up to on this busy last, you know, few weeks of the month or last few weeks of the year. And we are wishing everyone a happy holidays and a good, good wrap up to 2018 and looking forward to 2019 and sharing more stories about where we've gone and hopefully hearing from some of you guys about where you're headed. Yeah, you know, and I have, we have a schedule booked out already through April. So we have a lot of fun and interesting places coming up. I keep thinking, wow, we're coming up on like three years. Are we going to run out of things to talk to talk about? But no, nope, we haven't. Nice. Well, and I think you can always revisit things because things change, right? Like there's always yeah. a new ways to look at stuff. But yeah, I'm excited. I need to figure out where we're going next year. I still really want to do the London Paris trip, but here's my thought about London Paris, yes. by the way, to, to just to keep an eye on is number one with Brexit. Yeah. Like if they do a hard exit on Brexit in like the March, April time frame, yeah. like I don't know if you want to be there be over there. And True. then they're doing so many protests right in now Paris. in Paris. I know over the, um, like the gas the tax. tax and yeah. All. yeah. So it's just, I, and I have a friend that kind of got stuck in those protests recently. So I don't know. It's just something like I would just think about timing wise. Like you never know like when different things are going on, but just keep it on your radar. And of course I want you to, I want you to go and I want you to finally take like the girls, you know, do your <laughs> yeah. big international trip that you want to do, but just keep those things in mind. Yeah. I was thinking of that with the Paris stuff. Cause I'd been seeing that. I'm like, Oh my goodness, that would be horrible. But I hadn't thought about the Brexit that that's, you know, if there's like another layer to that that could be happening during that time frame, I had it just sounds like that. there could be a lot of confusion and yeah. I don't know. Like I, I just don't know. Like I imagine if if there is if there are issues, there might be protests and things. Yeah, of also, course. You yeah, know? of course. No, it's great, great insight. Thank you, as always. Well, I hope everybody has a great holiday. We are now done with Hanukkah, and now I need to make sure I have my Christmas stuff lined up and. I can't wait to um, see you in January. Yeah, I'm excited. Yay. Yeah, we'll be going back to Philadelphia, too. And New York. And I know, New York and Philadelphia together. It's hard Yay. to believe that's been a year, but it's a great year. I'm glad to call you friend. Me I'm too. Looking forward to it. Well, thanks again, everyone, for tuning in for another episode of Vacation Mavens, and we will chat with you again in 2019. Yep. Happy New Year. Bye. Bye.